If modern medicine didn't exist, what medical condition would you have died from, being severely impacted by? Rabies My brother and I were bitten by a rabid farm kitten when we were six and four years old. Without the foresight of my grandfather who had the cat tested and modern medicine creating the vaccine, my parents would be childless. Science I was born with a severe birth defect known as imperforate anus. That's medical speak for not everybody poops. My intensities didn't find the exit so I had no battle. All the muscles were there. I was given a colostomy for the first year of my life to increase my survivability by something like 75%. After that they fixed me. I would have died pretty quickly without modern medicine. In fact if I had been born maybe 40 years earlier I probably would have died. I never got to meet the doctor properly. He died when I was around 12-13. My folks didn't have insurance at the time so he did the surgeries for free. It's my understanding that some things still had to be paid for. But he at least waived his own fees. That's genius. I wonder how many little places like that exist that were just plain forgotten, like how many squatters are out there right under the noses of the property owners, how many people intentionally slip through the cracks of conventional living and no one notices. This reminds me of an episode of a TV show called, I think, Masterminds that was on about 15 years ago. It was kind of an upside down version of the traditional whodunit crime show, where they started each episode by telling you who done it, that is who was caught and convicted for some seemingly impossible and unsolvable crime. Then the show was about how they did it. There was an episode about a guy who escaped from a prison, but he was kinda lost and had nowhere to go and nowhere to live. He was browsing through a Toys R Us store and hid inside the store at closing time to get locked in. Roaming the store during the night, he discovered a void, essentially a small hidden room under a stairwell accessible via a hole or a grate hidden by some furniture. He started hiding inside the tiny room during the day and coming out at night to roam the store. He almost so would sneak out of the hole when the store was open to go out to get food or other necessities. By stealing items from the store displays or by sneaking small items into the store during business hours passing as a customer, he created a cozy little apartment for himself and lived there for some length of time before getting caught. Yeah, I remembered some of the details wrong. He escaped from prison. Here's an article about him. My friend had a loft on the third floor of a four-story condo building. He sits on the board for the hole and had to select a roofing contractor for some repairs. While reviewing the floor plans for the building, he noticed what appeared to be a triangular-shaped void space off of the master closet on the fourth floor. One day we were curious so we drilled some holes in the wall to see what was in there. We discovered about 200 square feet of completely unutilized space. The room was unfinished, with concrete flooring but there was insulation between the aluminum studs. There wasn't any ventilation or electric. We cut a larger hole installed a door, rolled out some cheap carpet, ran some electric to the room, and turned it into his man cave. We called it the portal to Narnia. He used it for several years but when he went to sell the place the listing agent convinced him to seal it back up. We left a few beers and a joint in there next to a note that said you'd found it. Remember that car park attendant in the UK, collecting parking fees for years, for a small piece of waste ground with a barrier and a booth. One day he didn't turn up and when the local authorities asked the council when they were going to send a replacement, they replied that they weren't aware of any car park at that location. The guy probably made his fortune and retired to some beach. Can't say he didn't work for it. That was pretty much my dream as a kid. I wanted to get locked into the mall at night and then lay on every display bed because for once it wouldn't be awkward. Read the frozen yogurt, pretzel, Starbucks stand, and have a fashion show in every shop we could get into. We should repurpose empty malls for indoor housing. You could have a senior citizen's community housed inside an old mall, complete with a shopping area 
community service, medical, dining, and housing, they don't have to deal with the outdoor elements, yet there could be green space, fountains, etc. When I was in grad school I lived in my office for about a year, showered at the university gym and stored my possessions in the lab, made that grad student stipend go a lot farther. One acquaintance took it to the next level and set up a tent and camping stove in the math building stairwell. Not sure how long he did it, but let's just say he could have availed himself of the gym showers a bit more frequently. When I was in college I remember hearing the legend of a mad lib back in the 80s who broke through the ceiling of his dorm room and sent up a Beyblair in the attic above his room. It was a fantastic tale of sticking it to the man and hedonism because one of the things he allegedly did was install a jacuzzi up there along with a bar and a sound system. Then, one day, I got in, and there it was, up in the attic, surrounded by chicken wire. A hot tub surrounded by empty bottles and cans. The legends were true. This reminds me of a dude who went to work one day in a city I lived in. Basically he saw a piece of waste ground near the city and brought a chair and a sign. Charged people five pounds per day to park on the ground. They eventually found out because the dude retired. He'd been doing this for damn near 20 years. Eventually he retired and people turned up to park but had nobody to pay. The council looked onto it and realized they owned the land but had forgotten about it. Every day I think about how much of a legend this dude was. I've always hated that people can't take a precedence in areas that simply aren't being used or are just so far away that no one goes there. I'm not saying it'd be good if people just took up precedence wherever they felt like but I think it'd be okay if sometimes people were just allowed to stay. The headline is very misleading. I live in the city this happened in. It was not in the mall but it was in the mall parking structure. The internal beams and all exposed metal bracing was sprayed with that kind of spray concrete to protect it from the elements. This genius used that very thing to disguise the area where he built the room so from the outside it would look like it has always been there and it was just some type of maintenance area. A colleague told me he went to university with a guy who lived in Subway Tunnel. The guy according to my colleague was very smart, he studied and took shower at the university gym, made additional money by providing tuition and writing papers, assignments for other rich students, etc. I can't recall the guy's name but I was told he is an entrepreneur in the first dot com boom bust. There's all sorts of stairwells, maintenance closets all over many local or metro cities I'm surprised there aren't county maintenance men that could easily figure out how to sell off spaces to look the other way for certain people. Years ago I used to work in central London B&B Hotel in affluent Chelsea Borough. Once during night shift whilst patrolling I found snoring noise from one of the cupboards. No one had the key to it except maintenance manager who came in the morning. I locked the door as I was spooked and this irritated me. It was around 5 am I could hear some rustle inside and I immediately went again to office downstairs to look for keys and just then I saw on CCTV one guy running to exit building. Later on during daytime whilst researching CCTV they found out he was ex-employee who worked on refurb of the place and had key to it. Whenever he missed last train he would sneak in and sleep in the cupboard and sneak out before morning shift arrived. He never came after that incident as we changed the locks. I was always trying to do things like this at my high school. I had one little hidden room where I used to take my girlfriends. Another was a massive cavity where we used to get high. I hope some other kids still use those spots. If anyone cares. It's been over a decade since he was discovered and banned from entering the mall. Since then, he dreams of returning to the mall again and is seeking legal action to allow him to walk in the mall again. We should repurpose empty malls for indoor housing. You could have a senior citizen's community housed inside an old mall, complete with a shopping area. 
community service, medical, dining, and housing. They don't have to deal with the outdoor elements, yet there could be green space, fountains, etc. When I was in grad school I lived in my office for about a year, showered at the university gym and stored my possessions in the lab, made that grad student stipend go a lot farther. One acquaintance took it to the next level and set up a tent and camping stove in the math building stairwell. Not sure how long he did it, but let's just say he could have availed himself of the gym showers a bit more frequently. When I was in college I remember hearing the legend of a mad lib back in the 80s who broke through the ceiling of his dorm room and sent up a Beyblair in the attic above his room. It was a fantastic tale of sticking it to the man and hedonism because one of the things he allegedly did was install a jacuzzi up there along with a bar and a sound system. Then, one day, I got in, and there it was, up in the attic, surrounded by chicken wire. A hot tub surrounded by empty bottles and cans. The legends were true. This reminds me of a dude who went to work one day in a city I lived in. Basically he saw a piece of waste ground near the city and brought a chair and a sign. Charged people five pounds per day to park on the ground. They eventually found out because the dude retired. He'd been doing this for damn near 20 years. Eventually he retired and people turned up to park but had nobody to pay. The council looked onto it and realized they owned the land but had forgotten about it. Every day I think about how much of a legend this dude was. I've always hated that people can't take a president in areas that simply aren't being used or are just so far away that no one goes there. I'm not saying it'd be good if people just took up presidents wherever they felt like but I think it'd be okay if sometimes people were just allowed to stay. The headline is very misleading. I live in the city this happened in. It was not in the mall but it was in the mall parking structure, the internal beams and all exposed metal bracing was sprayed with that kind of spray concrete to protect it from the elements, this genius used that very thing to disguise the area where he built the room so from the outside it would look like it has always been there and it was just some type of maintenance area. A colleague told me he went to university with a guy who lived in Subway Tunnel. The guy according to my colleague was very smart, he studied and took shower at the university gym, made additional money by providing tuition and writing papers, assignments for other rich students, etc. I can't recall the guy's name but I was told he is an entrepreneur in the first dot com boom bust. I work security we got a new site and we were clearing homeless out of it. Three separate shanty towns in the complex, one on the roof, one in an old gym, and one in an old bakery. They had propane stoves and had community breakfast. It was pretty crazy. The one on the roof was bizarre. They were getting up and down without using the ladder on the building or fire risers and they had no ladders on the roof. It was so strange. I used to work as a department manager for a local big box hardware store. Our flatbed driver was in his late 60s and avoided any work other than driving. He always seemed to disappear when there was a lack of delivery work for him. One particularly slow day we had an emergency concrete order come in. I was nice and loaded his three pallets onto the flatbed and called for him over the intercom. He didn't show up called his phone. No answer. After about the significant amount of searching I found him in a cleverly designed sleeping arrangement that he disguised with two old refrigerator boxes amongst the new in-box appliance storage racks. He slept on what I can only describe as a homemade beanbag chair made out of a canvas bulk materials bag filled with discarded polystyrene packing materials. What gave him away was his snoring. After a brief but pleasant exchange he got up and made his delivery. He explained that he was retiring in three months and didn't want to spend it stacking block or sorting stacks of lumber. I agreed to only harass him if I needed a delivery made. TLDR, 
older delivery driver at big box store used discarded shipping and packing materials to make himself a cleverly hidden bed to avoid manual labor while not delivering. Used to work at a very large and old Las Vegas casino, there was an old and abandoned section of the hotel that I figured if times got tight I would squat in one of those rooms. With the cost of rent in Las Vegas I would be surprised if it wasn't happening right now. In one of the dorms at Boston University, I found an empty room in the basement, along with a friend. She and I made a fully functioning dark room in it complete with two enlargers, all the chemicals, even a working sink. This was in the mid-90s, when film still ruled. Professors could never understand how the two of us always got our assignments in on time, or even early, when the photojournalism program's darkroom was always so backed up. Used it for two straight years before we graduated, never got caught. Could he have absolutely done this at the community college I went to? So many small buildings on campus that were basically just extra classrooms in case they were needed for exams but still were never used. I worked at a British TV company 20 years ago and we had a maintenance room there which was set up for the guys to have a break on shift. We had a couch and fridges and TV and a bed if you wanted a sleep. Spent many an hour there watching sport instead of fixing their building. This just reminded me of the time German 985 shoved a mall into a house with an ice cream parlor bigger than the Best Buy and PetSmart combined the germ wall of America. Everybody. Um, I dreamt I did this once, after I, in real life, found a room plan to be a air conditioning plant area that they never ended up using in a shopping center. It would have made a great apartment, even had a view through the vent slats. All you'd need to do was disguise the door. My dream was a cupboard with a false back that you couldn't tell was a door, and you could tap into water and sewage and nobody would ever know. But this madman went and did it. Anyone remember the King of the Hill episode where Dale gets hired to exterminate whatever pests are coming out at night in Lucky Mart, only to discover Chuck Main Joni was actually living inside a toilet paper fortress? Great episode. I can't believe this isn't on top but, cancer, the cure to my cancer was found during my lifetime. If I had gotten it before I was 24 it would have been a quick unstoppable death sentence. Now my cancer is considered mostly curable. I had two tumors made of double negative HER2 positive ductal carcinoma at stage 3. Thanks to Herceptin, Pergetta, radiation, and a double mastectomy I have only a 1% chance of having a reoccurrence over 10 years. Pneumonia Two in one year, I was like seven years old and my doc gave us the wrong antibiotics. Even with modern medicine I nearly died because the doc knew exactly what I had when I stepped on the room. He was wrong. I nearly died and my parents were traumatized because they thought I wouldn't make it. But because of another great doctor who didn't act before he thought, I got the right medication. Graves' disease is fatal without treatment and can also make you blind. Now the symptoms develop slowly so you have plenty of time to get help, but if meds didn't exist, I would have died years ago. I'm no longer on meds now, it's stable, though I still need to get checkups, but I still have other hormonal problems and literally live on birth control. My periods are really bad and irregular with or without pills. So I have to skip periods and thank God it works. I if I'll actually die without but even if I don't, I've considered killing myself more than once cause the pain was unbearable and painkillers don't do shit. I couldn't eat proper food and had a lot to do to even get liquids down. I'd be constantly choking, couldn't lie flat to sleep, would suffer from horrific pains in the chest. I have achalasia, the muscle opening the esophagus for food to get through to the stomach isn't working. Very basic explanation. Actually, the above description was my life from about 14, 15, 22 until I was finally diagnosed and had a surgery done. 
I'm reasonably certain I'd have committed suicide from some tooth pain I had last July, and the tooth was broken off and in the very back of my mouth, so it's not like I'd have been able to just pull it myself cast away style. I'd have had to cut into my gum with a knife and try to dig the extremely painful tooth with the exposed nerve out and probably wouldn't have been able to do it, so suicide would have been a viable option. Also I got swarmed by bees and went into anaphylactic shock 15 years ago. Without simple antihistamines I'd definitely be dead.